What's going on guys? Cream of Wheat here coming back at you with another video. Today we're doing the realistic rebuild of the Seattle Seahawks and I'm not sure why this team keeps getting requested so much and I understand they do have their issues. Part of the reason I wanted to do a realistic rebuild before we get to a fantasy style one somewhere down the line is this is a very very good team and there's an interesting dynamic that we will have to address potentially. Um, if you guys have never watched a realistic rebuild on my channel before, we use actual real prospects by changing their name after the draft based on who they maybe match up with or a player in that same general area at the same position in the draft. Um, but there's an interesting dynamic with Bobby Wagner and Earl Thomas really not getting along recently. I'm not sure if you guys uh, saw the tweet, but Bobby Wagner said, uh, like, like, E, keep my name out your mouth. Uh, stop being jealous of other people's success. Hope you keep balling, bro. Um, after Earl Thomas said, like, Bobby Wagner shouldn't have played on an injured hamstring or whatever, which, like, maybe he shouldn't have done, but also at the same time, like, I don't know, that's not probably the best way to go about it is uh, subtweeting on, uh, on Twitter. But, uh, you know, regardless, maybe we have to trade Earl Thomas or Bobby Wagner in the realistic style. But I don't really want to do that. Earl Thomas is my second active favorite player in the league. And uh, Bobby Wagner's a sick player. So we are at a weird spot with that. All right, so glaring holes on this team. Apparently Pete Carroll thinks the biggest need is uh, a running back, which isn't true when you look at every single spot in the offensive line, pretty much apart from Justin Britt. Justin Britt is a decent player. Dwayne Brown was traded for. He's like, what, 33? He's 32, will be 33 coming up um i mean it's just not a fantastic team that's the reality that we're uh, that we're sitting in right now offensive line sucks they do have pieces jimmy graham's a solid tight end in the game at least um and then at wide receiver doug baldwin's fantastic one of the most underrated players in the nfl amara darbo has potential tyler lockett's decent in the slot paul richardson has come out at a great season and then at running back i'm not really sure what to do because like they're all somewhat mediocre. Chris Carson and Mike Davis, I think, are the most usable on this team. Thomas Rawls, I might just add some of these guys to the trade block to get the most value out of them. We'll put Eddie Lacy on the trade block as well, see if I can get some type of pick for them. And then defensively, I mean, K.J. Wright should be a higher overall, probably. He is 28. We might have to uh, upgrade from him at some point in the draft. Michael Wilhoit, obviously needs to be upgraded upon. Cam Chancellor is awesome. Earl Thomas, hook him horns, love him. Um, he's awesome. Richard Sherman is still fine. He is 28. He's got superstar development. We got to get his coverages up. Uh, but he's 94 overall. He's not going anywhere. And then what is it? Justin Coleman? Not that bad in the game. Got to upgrade zone coverage, of course, and press. Shaq Griffin's cool. Um, Byron Maxwell, probably not ideal. Deshaun Shedd is interesting. Michael Bennett should be fine. Cliff Averill, we're probably going to have to move on from. I might not even start him. He's 31. But in a realistic rebuild, we're not going to trade Cliff Averill. Uh, we'll probably just start Frank Clark over him, which is you know, pretty much what happens now because Cliff Averill is injured. And then Jerron Reed, Sheldon Richardson, and Malik McDowell, and Nas Jones. I mean, this is a really good interior defensive line. I might even consider switching to a 3-4 and having KJ Wright play middle linebacker so we can utilize more of these defensive linemen. Put Frank Clark at outside linebacker. Michael Bennett, or I guess Deion Jordan could play outside linebacker. He had a really solid season in terms of um, generating pressure. The only problem is Deion Jordan's slow development. Total bust for the Dolphins when they took him. But he's played actually really, really well statistically um, in terms of uh, pressures per snap. And then Malik McDowell has a ton of potential. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen after his car accident. He has actually quick development as well. Jerron Reed's great. Sheldon Richardson, super solid. I might want to play Jerron Reed at nose tackle. And then Sheldon Richardson at 3-4 end. Malik McDowell at 3-4 end. Uh, Michael Bennett at outside linebacker. I know that doesn't make a whole ton of sense. He is 31. We're likely going to have to move on from him eventually and upgrade with a defensive lineman in the draft. And then Frank Clark at outside linebacker. That's probably what we're going to have to do. I think 3-4 would fit this team best for the personnel, at least in Madden. So let me make those changes. All right, so the offense hasn't changed at all, exactly as is. Defensively, full 3-4. Cliff Averill actually, I thought, made a better fit at outside linebacker, so he's going to play there. Frank Clark at right outside linebacker. Sheldon Richardson at right end. Malik McDowell is going to be our nose, Nas Jones behind him. 
Jerron Reed's going to be our backup left end. And Michael Bennett went up to an 88 overall uh, for whatever reason on the left side over the right. Not sure why that would be. Scheme fit, maybe. Not totally sure. Um, Madden's a little weird like that sometimes. 31 years old is real tough. He'll eventually probably be overtaken by Jerron Reed at some point where it makes more sense to start someone that has more potential at 23 years old. And he's not very fast. He doesn't, I'd rather play him at nose tackle, but I wanted Malik McDowell, someone with quick development, uh, to play over him and Michael Bennett. It doesn't make sense to trade him in a realistic rebuild, so we're not going to do that. But this is pretty much the team. And uh, yeah, I'm going to field offers for those running backs. Hopefully we get some, because I would gladly take picks if we're going to get offers. And it doesn't look like we're going to get any. That is unfortunate. All right, midseason mark. Jimmy Graham is a free agent. He is our top free agent. He's 93 overall, though. So I'm not sure who else might be there. We're 4-3, and three, currently atop the NFC West. Cardinals are killing it at 0-7. Absolutely destroying the NFL by storm. Taking them. Um, free agents, we have Sheldon Richardson along with Jimmy Graham, Paul Richardson, Luke Wilson, Justin Coleman. Very interesting. Uh, Bradley McDougall, I have no interest in. Deion Jordan, no interest. Thomas Rawls, Eddie Lacy. I might want to bring back Mike Davis. But other than that, I think I'm pretty much fine. All right, so everyone re-signed that I wanted to uh, above Justin Coleman, except for Luke Wilson, who as a backup tight end in Madden, it's just not really that important. Doesn't make a lot of sense to retain him as a 27-year-old tight end um, who isn't even starting. He's a decent player. He's a good backup, but he doesn't really and won't really play much in simulation. And I forgot I wanted uh, Mike Davis. All right, signed Mike Davis for close to nothing. He's at like 1.3 mil a year. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to get a better running back over him. But it's good to have potential uh, depth on the team that we can use. But uh, I'm going to spend some of this coach XP. And uh, I will see you guys for the playoffs, which it looks like we're going to make. All right, we actually did not make the playoffs. Finishing 5-11? and 11? Are you kidding me? How? How did that... Okay, we lost every preseason game. That doesn't matter. But started off the season, all right, Packers are a decent team. Titans are a playoff team in real life. Um, lose to them, that's fine. Beat the Giants, crush them, but then loss to the Texans, lost to the Redskins, barely beat the winless Cardinals probably at the time, and then lost out every single game from the Falcons onward. From week 11 onward, we lost every game in Sim. That's why Sim is so unreliable. Cardinals finished 3-13. and 13. Uh, That's entirely too annoying. Uh, <laughs> love simulation, right? All right, I'll see you guys at free agency. I'm not sure what I, if anyone, plan on signing. But if there's a decent running back like a Tevin Coleman, I don't really think I would pursue Le'Veon Bell. Although, I suppose, uh, I suppose the Seahawks could be in the market for Le'Veon Bell. As uh, he is going to be a free agent this year if um, if the Steelers don't re-sign him, which they'd be foolish not to. So there are some talented players in free agency. Uh, the one that makes the most sense for us would be uh, Spencer Ware. But I just don't want him. Jarek McKinnon actually makes a ton of sense too. Jeremy Hill would fit well. But I don't really want to sign any of those guys. So we're just not going to deal with that. And I'm actually, I got to turn back or turn auto scouting off. All right. That is back to manual. I'm going to do a little bit of scouting through the off season and then see you guys for the draft. Got to land some big players here. Looking at the offensive line. I mean, if you look at it right now, it is pathetic. Ethan Pochich. I mean, Dwayne Brown has dropped off tremendously. It's, this is a bad looking team. Offensive line's horrific. Defensively, uh, not doing amazing XP-wise. Cliff Averill dropped off a lot. So did Michael Bennett. Richard Sherman lost an overall point. We got to check out the stats, though. That's something I forgot to do. Let's go ahead and see. Russell Wilson, about 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Pretty much a Russell Wilson-esque season. He also rushed for 358 yards and 90 attempts, 3 touchdowns. It's Chris Carson. Rush for 1,000 yards and six touchdowns. Only average 3.4 on the ground. That's horrific. Five fumbles as well. If you fumble as many times as you're breaking tackles, you should not be an NFL running back. Receiving, Doug Baldwin had a very good season. 89 catches for 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. The rest was uh, pretty inconsequential. 
Blocking. We can't see the full stats here, but uh, it's not looking good. Defensively, B Wags had a really, really good season. 136 tackles led the team. Uh, tackles for loss would be 15 for Michael Bennett, 9 for Sheldon Richardson. QB sacks, not generating a ton of pressure. The most sacks on the team was 6. But uh, a lot of guys had sacks. Five and a half for Bobby Wagner. That's insane. Interceptions, five for Richard Sherman. Three for B-Wags. Two for Earl Thomas. Force fumbles. I see some of the five. It's Cliff Averill. That's interesting. Fumble recoveries. We only had three as a team. And then defensive touchdowns. I see one. It's Richard Sherman. What about awards? I don't see anyone other than Bobby Wagner even being in the running here. As we see no sign of Russell Wilson for Offensive Player of the Year. Or MVP, I should say. And then Offensive Player of the Year, Richard, excuse me, Russell Wilson is in there at number seven. Defense Player of the Year, no Bobby Wagner, but Brooks Reed and Devondre Campbell are here. Not to mention Vinnie Curry and Craig Robertson and Anthony Hitchens. That's crazy. Mitchell Trubisky wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Chris Carson actually finished in the top three at number three. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Ruben Foster, an, F an NFC West guy that we're going to have to go up, uh, up against minimum two times a year. You know, depending on how the playoffs work. But I am going to scout and see you guys for the draft. We got to hit big on some of our players. This is an interesting prospect. Brady Osweiler. A combination of the two most dominant quarterbacks in NFL history. Could be a player to look out for at outside linebacker. Oh, he's a beast. All right, time for the NFL draft. We actually have a top 10 pick. It's the seventh overall pick in the draft. And that's in every other round. I really wish I could have traded Thomas Rawls and Eddie Lacy. But unfortunately, it was for not. All right, I have no desire to take this seventh overall pick. The number one guy on my board was drafted. He was a cornerback. Um, and I think this is actually not a bad offer with the Rams for a first rounder from them next year. Uh, that's an awful from the Browns. I think what we're going to do, and that's not even a bad offer from the Chiefs. I think we're going to do it with the Rams, though. Taking a 2018 this year. Yeah, we're going to take the first rounder next year. A 2 and a 7 this year from the Rams. The first rounder should have value next year. They finish as badly as they did this year. And now we're into the second round. The number one player on my board right now is a running back. Gordon Elliott out of Nebraska. Interesting combo of, uh, of another group. Melvin Gordon and Ezekiel Elliott. This time um, he's out of Nebraska. Not either Ohio State or Wisconsin, but Gordon Elliott out of Nebraska. He is ranked at number 26 in the draft. We took him at number 39. I don't know what the exact scheme is, but he looks like a pretty decent player. Uh, 92 speed, 90 excel, 91 carrying, 77 ball carry vision, 82 spin, 82 juke. Pretty well-rounded running back. 89 elusiveness is great as well. Awareness is low, which I like to see. 79 route running is extremely high. The reason I like to see low awareness, by the way, is because it's very easy to upgrade. And he's already a good player with low awareness. So his overall is going to skyrocket uh, once you increase awareness. So I'm happy we took that pick. He should be our new starting running back. Hoping for big things with this pick. Hook him horns. Karen Leno out of Texas. Offensive lineman. Decent top three skills. He's fast. He's strong. Should fit the bill. Ranked number 29 in the class. We took him at number 53. He'll come in right away and start as a rookie. 87th strength is not too bad. 80 run block, 78 pass block, 84 impact blocking. He's crazy fast at 76 speed, 76 acceleration. He is a solid player. Just wish he had a better development than normal. But uh, yeah, I can't complain about normal, with especially the way the last Redskins uh, fantasy rebuild went. With this pick in the third round, I'm going to take a fourth round player, at, which is uh, Derek Mabin out of Florida. Looks really, really talented. Hopefully should be the eventual replacement for either Michael Bennett or Cliff Averill, hoping to be a sick player. He actually is very good. He's only a 75 overall, I would say partially because he doesn't fit the scheme. He looks incredible. Quick development, he's ranked number 53 in the class. We took him at 71. 76 strength isn't terrible, but really what I care about is 80 speed, 86 power move. We can upgrade block shed. Play rec is a 66, awareness is a 56. He's a pretty solid player. This isn't an insane draft class, but it's, it's very well-rounded. And quick development, I mean, I love to see that. I'm going to take another pass rusher with this pick, which is Fanal Pugh out of Colorado State. He looks to be a very interesting and intriguing prospect. Not exactly sure where he fits. It really depends on how good he is. He's not going to be fast. He's not going to be fast. 
um, at five second flat 40. But he's very strong. Could play defensive tackle. He's an excellent pick. Doesn't fit the scheme. Uh, ranked number 54 in the class. 103 is where we picked him. 92 strength is great. 88 tackle. 82 block shed. 78 power moves isn't all that bad. Really low play rec. And I imagine awareness is right in the same ballpark. 88 tackle. Um, he's a solid interior guy. Probably move him to defensive tackle. And he'll be good depth. I really need to start drafting offensive linemen, though. With this pick, I'm taking Patrick Wiggum out of UCF. Interior, uh, or interior, inside linebacker out of UCF. Hopefully, he'll fit the scheme pretty well. He is a 70 overall. Uh, reached a little bit here. Says good pick, but, I mean, he's not incredible. 84 speed, 80 tackle, 91 hit power, 80 pursuit. I mean, he's, he's good in those departments. Play rec's pretty high. Uh, block shed's pretty low. Awareness is so low. Um... Not a terrible player, but I don't see him playing over KJ Wright anytime soon. Back-to-back -back picks. We're taking an offensive lineman with this one. Simon Roy. He looks okay at Iowa State. I'm hoping for a good development trait. He's ranked number 66 in the class. We took him at 136. 83 strength, 79 run block, 79 pass block, 81 impact blocking. He's okay. Oh, this player is still on the board. Malik Pema out of Southern Illinois. 24 years old. He's kind of old, but he looks... Fairly decent. 481 isn't really bad speed for a pass rusher. That's good top three skills. It's a seventh round. I mean, I don't even know what I'm expecting here. Rank number uh, 120. We take about 199. 77 speed, 80 tackle, 83 power move, 80 hit power. He's good depth. Not not going to start, though. I mean, it's a seventh round. It's, it's, it's okay. I'm going to take Antoine McMillan here out of Rhode Island. Um, ranked number 192. We took him at 213. He's just not strong enough unfortunately to be a quality offensive lineman didn't get enough offensive linemen in this draft class but there weren't enough quality ones so i'm not going to reach just because i totally forgot about jd mckissage as well um mckissage uh, uh we have so many running backs and i'm starting the rookie out of nebraska he looks very good we need to get him playing time there <laughs> so many 76 to 78 overall backs is Doug Baldwin actually regressing? That's so annoying. He just had a really good season, too. All right, Cliff Averill's in the final year of his deal. His cap hit is over 10 mil. I gotta say, I just really don't want Cliff Averill anymore. He's already down to an 80. Um, the cap penalty of releasing him is 620k. We're gonna free 10 mil in cap space, uh, get more cap room, and we're gonna start the rookie, Derek Mabin out of Florida. Quick development. He's going to work really well. And um, I think this is going to be better for the long term. I really shouldn't even be playing Michael Bennett anymore. He's he's just going down so much. As you can see, important stats regressing, which is not good. We're going to rock with it though for this season. We'll see what happens next season. He might be a free agent as well. And then Elliot is going to start at halfback. That is the one change I'm going to make. And I'll probably make him return kicks as well. And then we're going to go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. He is a pretty good overall returner. 96. I will take that. Where else can I get him? Make sure he's a third down running back. That's a big one. He's got to play as many snaps as possible. We got to get him involved. All right. Six and two at the midseason mark. We're doing much better. Wish I could say the same for the Cardinals. But uh, if I know this, the game simulation, we're probably going to, uh, to lose out or something like that. Go, you know, maybe win one, finish, uh, you know, seven wins. So that wouldn't be all that good. I'm going to do some scouting. Also got to reassign Richard Sherman. Got to upgrade the offensive line. Oh, we had the fourth overall pick from the Rams projected. That's not bad. Solid number one overall pick at a position we need. Awesome. Ah, even better. Free agents. We got Richard Sherman. Got AT3, Tyler Lockett, KJ Wright, Frank Clark. Uh, have no interest in re-signing Dwayne Brown. You know what? I don't think I'm going to go and try to re-sign KJ Wright. He's 29. Uh, his regression hit to make his speed go down to a 78. Like, I, I think he's still way better in real life than it shows in the game. But for the game, for the purposes of making this team as good as possible, I'm not sure KJ Wright is in the long-term plans. And I really don't like the fact that I'm sitting in a 
I want you know KJ Wright to be an outside linebacker, but personnel wise, I mean, he, I don't know if he fits anymore. We re-signed Frank Clark, Tyler Lockett, ET3, and Richard Sherman though. Ooh, have made the playoffs at 10 and 6. Good enough for the best in the division. Russell Wilson threw for over 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. Rushing, that is a bad season. He had nine touchdowns, sure, um, and had a way better broken tackle to fumble ratio, but only averaged three yards per carry. Nine touchdowns, he had 848 yards. That is not a good rookie season, in my opinion. Um, the yards per carry is just terrific. Jimmy Graham led our team in catches, however, Doug Baldwin had the most yards. Jimmy Graham had 11 touchdowns, though. We need to get this offense clicking, and I think it starts with the offensive line, which is fairly non-existent. Defensively, B-Wags had 122 tackles, which led the team. I already see a ridiculous number. Sheldon Richardson, 15 tackles for loss, 11 for Michael Bennett. Quarterback sacks, though, 18 and a half for Sheldon Richardson. What a beast. Nine and a half for Frank Clark, nine for rookie Derek Maven. That, that could be a defensive rookie of the year, maybe. I don't know. Interceptions, 8 for B-Wags, 3 for Cam Chancellor, 3 for Sherm, 2 for Justin Coleman. Not really, I mean, like, the stat-wise, we're not really capitalizing all that well. Two fumble recoveries and two forced fumbles for Frank Clark lead this team, and I don't see any defensive touchdowns. I don't think we had any. Big Ben wins MVP. Russell Wilson in there at number 3. Interesting. NSC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Todd Gurley. Russell Wilson in there at number 2. Defensive Player of the Year, Deion Jones. B-Wags at 2. Sheldon Richardson at number 6. Offensive Rookie of the Year. It goes to Gordon Elliott. That's a surprise. <laughs> he was shit. All right. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Craig Walton wins it over Derek Maven. Oh, rough. Craig Walton was on my board, too, but I decided that we were going to stick with KJ Wright for another year. Interesting. Right, I'm going to use some of this XP and uh, see if I can get this team a little bit better. Before we play, or we don't really play games here. Before we simulate this game versus the Saints. I don't know. I mean, the team isn't overwhelming, which is where I wish it was. Our upgraded team, Elliot is all the way up to an 87 overall. I think I focused on... I did a little bit with... Actually, I can just check. Um, focus on ball carry vision and awareness the most. He also got quick development for winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. I guess I thought he already had it or something. Uh, when I checked that out. But ball carry vision mainly and awareness. Also a little bit to juke and spin. There are no real major upgrades, I would say. Other than him. Maybe I don't know why he's such a low overall. He looks very good. Um, made the Pro Bowl too. It would very strange. But um, I guess awareness and play rec are probably bringing his overall way down. That's probably what it is. He'll be a higher overall next year. All right, wild card against the Saints. We're not messing around. Can we advance to the divisional here in 2018? No, we cannot. That is a uh, that's annoying. All right, KJ Wright still has not been re-signed. Robbie Gold, I guess, was our starting kicker, uh, and he really isn't bad. I might re-sign Robbie Gold. We'll offer that to him, one-year deal. He re-signs KJ Wright. However, he's even down more. He's it's up to, down to 76 speed, zone coverage, worst block, shed, hit power, stamina, ta uh, stamina, stamina, tackle, agility, speed, acceleration. I mean, all, all, all. He's bad. He, I, I can't resign him. There's no, there's no room for development there. All right, in free agency, we have about 30 mil to spend. Delaney Walker's here. Tevin Coleman's here. I have no interest in in any of these top guys, unfortunately. Well, I, that's not unfortunate. Just uh, they don't really fit. So. I guess without further ado, we're going to go to the draft. I'm going to do a bit of scouting. And then we're going to draft some studs. All right. NFL draft time. I might have to trade up for a prospect. Might have to. All right. He went at number three. I simply was not prepared to trade up um, that far in the draft. So I couldn't, couldn't do that. Putting a lot of focus into the draft uh, with offensive linemen, and I'm in between these two guys. I think it makes the most sense to take Kyrie Connor just because he's a little bit stronger. And uh, he's an 81 overall, ranked number 6 in the draft. We took him at number 12. Very, very solid player. 92 strength, 82 run block, 83 pass block, 86 impact blocking, 71 speed. It's decent. I could play him at either guard or tackle. I'm not sure where his eventual best fit will be. 
but very solid number 12 overall selection. Going for Perry Mullins here out of Miami. Another first round pick on a guard. Don't necessarily have to play him at guard. He's fantastic. Ranked number 14 in the draft. We took him at number 22. Quick development is critical. 88 strength, 83 run block, 76 pass block, 91 impact blocking, 75 speed, 77 acceleration. Very, very solid guard. And of course, quick development is awesome to get. Trading away this pick for hopefully a second round or some stuff next year. Um, I'd love to do that with the Browns. Picking up a 2, a 3, and a 6 all next year. Browns end up taking a left tackle with that pick. That's fine. I'm still very offensive line focused in this draft. I'm trading down this third round pick as well for a second rounder next year. We're going to get that from the New Orleans Saints also picking up a 4 next year. Not exactly sure what those picks are going to end up being, but uh, still offensive line focused in this draft. With this pick, I'm taking a center. Dane Whale out of LSU. Looks very, very good. Great top three skills. Strong, fast, quick, and agile. Exactly what I want. He's ranked number 40 in the class. We're taking him at 118. Quick development, 76 overall. Not exactly sure where we're going to play him on the offensive line just yet, but he will have a spot starting for sure, 100%. I can't pass up a Texas player. Quintez Gritton out of Texas. Hook him horns. Fast. Strong. Can block well. Yes. Superstar development. You love to see it. Ranked number 58 in the class. We think about 150. 89 strength. 80 run block. 78 pass block. 90 impact blocking. 74 speed. 79 acceleration. And of course, again, superstar development. That is an incredible pick. And he will also immediately come in and start. We got to figure out where these guys are going to play on this line. And with this pick, taking a pass rusher, Anton Holiday, out of Harvard. He's only 21. He's very smart. He's an insane athlete. His top three skills are amazing. Here he is. Golf claps all around. Or actually, that shit. 87 speed, 81 tackle, 78 block shit, 84 hit power, 86 finesse move, 85 pursuit. Superstar development here. Supposed to go in the seventh round. Really, really solid player. Super excited to draft him and get him on the squad. Um, that's an awesome pick. All right, time to figure out where everyone's going to play on the offensive line. Justin Britt might not have a spot. I mean, he can't really block all that well and has limited potential. Jermaine Effetti, there's not even a shot. And forget about Riso Diambo. Mullins, left tackle. I think we're going to play our superstar, Quintez Gridden. At left tackle, maybe. All right, I really don't like the personnel that we have going on. I have to understand that Michael Bennett, at 33 years old, is not a usable player with this regression setting in. And I probably would prefer to return to a 4-3 with this set of guys. But, I, get, I mean, we have too many good players in too many different spots. Or too many of the same spots, I should say. Like, I want Anton Holiday starting. He is superstar development. He's insane going after the quarterback. I want him starting. Frank Clark's got to start. But then you got a guy like Mabin. Quick development. Made the Pro Bowl last year. Why would you not want to have him out there being real good going after the QB? You would. So, I mean, like, Holiday makes things kind of weird. I think... Actually, this actually isn't even that bad at all. I'm going to move Frank Clark to right end. I gotta get his block shit up badly. I'm gonna move Frank Clark to right end. This actually does make a decent bit of sense. Speed rusher doesn't matter. It's gonna revert to something um, after I save it. So he's gonna play right end. Where did he go? All right, he's an 83 overall. Michael Bennett's gotta go. Um, maybe we'll keep his veteran leadership on the team or whatever. I need a corner too. We're gonna start Maven and Holiday. Wiggum, I guess, is going to be our middle linebacker. If I could trade Michael Bennett for a middle linebacker, that'd be great. I just don't see that being all that realistic. Despite John Schneider, the current GM of the Seahawks, being adventurous and trading for players in the past, like Marshawn Lynch, you know, I just don't, I don't see that happening just for the sake of the realistic rebuild or whatever. I need a middle linebacker badly. You know, Wiggum has potential. He's just going to have to work. Still need cornerbacks as well. But I think this is a pretty good way of arranging this team in the 3-4. Holiday and Mabin are insane players. Holiday is insane, actually. But Mab Mabin's good. Uh, 80 speed, 92 power move is extremely solid, though. Just need Parker, Parker Wiggum. 
I don't know, drafted player. Oh, I said we were going to, Patrick, I said we were going to change these to actual real players for year one. I forgot to do that. It doesn't really matter. Some people don't care. Um, kind of sucks if you wanted to see specific guys, but whatever. Uh, Justin Britt, I don't want to start either. This is the offensive line we're going with as well. Justin Britt has been relegated to backup. Kier Leno is going to start at right guard and stay there. And I can't pass up a quick development center with all better blocking stats than Justin Britt has um, to start. Like he's just he's just way better. Had to start him. And then we're gonna start an interesting player at left tackle. Quintez Gritton's gonna move over there. He fits probably better as a guard, but I think he's gonna you know be the best as a left tackle over the long term. And then if I could play him at uh, if I play one of these guys, I don't want Justin Britt here anymore, man. I need a different center. Why is John Ryan such a low overall? I guess he's regressing. I don't know. All right, this is the team. We're going to simulate. We need players to come in and play in a big way here in year number three. Pushing for the playoffs. It's a playoff caliber team. We just need people to make strides, take steps, get us to the playoffs. Russell Wilson needs to lead this squad. We just need players to step up. And, I mean, this is this is a solid roster with a ton of potential. Uh, I simulated right to the playoffs. I'm going to have to stop it around midseason mark for obvious reasons. All right, we stopped the simulation here at week eight. Got to play the 6-0 Steelers, so that probably will be a 4-3 record at the actual midseason cutoff for us. Of course, we've seen that before. Um, Rams are 6-2, and 49ers and Cardinals are not exactly performing all that well. We're going to go ahead and scout later. I don't know why I did that right now. It doesn't really matter all that much in this current position. We don't have a ton of draft needs, but B-Wags is a free agent. Have to bring him back. Have to bring back Russell Wilson. Uh, really would like to bring back Jerron Reed. He's a great backup to have. All right, got all three of those guys back. I'm not really worried about Robbie Gold right now. I'm going to upgrade our players. What's the XP situation looking like? Actually, pretty good for Doug Baldwin. Nothing crazy, though. And then defensively, like, that's a ton of XP for my man Anton Holiday. Finished 10-5-1. and one. Not fantastic. We made the playoffs, though, which is all that matters. Uh, Chase the Rams, who finished 11 and 5. See the stats. Uh, pretty weak season from Russell Wilson. Dangerous, you could say. 3,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, 12 picks. Rushing. Gordon Elliott with a much improved second season, nearly 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns, average 4.1 per carry. Receiving Doug Baldwin, led our team in catches, 83 yards, 1,100, excuse me, 83 receptions, 1,100 yards, 9 touchdowns. Blocking. Offensive line didn't let up that many sacks for a bunch of uh, younger players. As Justin Coleman led our team in tackles. On what planet did he get 112? Tackles for loss, 14 from Sheldon Richardson. Sacks, Anton Holiday, the rookie, had 7.5. We had a lot of sack dis uh, distribution over the team. Interceptions, 6 from BWAGS, 4 for ET3, 2 for Cam, 2 for Sherm. Force fumbles, we have 2 from Shaq, Malik McDowell, and Derek Maven. Fumble recoveries, too, from Derek Maven led the team. And I see at least one defensive touchdown. Earl Thomas. Yearly awards, though. Big Ben, again, wins MVP. No Seahawks in there. NFC Offensive Player of the Year. No Seahawks in there. Defensive Player of the Year. B. Wags at number four. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Marcus Tucker. Show me Defensive Rookie of the Year. Anton Holiday gets it. There we go. All right. Offensive line does not have a lot of XP as a group, unfortunately. Defensively, 50K for Anton Holiday. Defensive Rookie of the Year helps out a lot with that. He had a really good season. This is the full upgraded team, though, in year number three. There will be a year number four regardless. I actually will spend some Coach XP. I'm not even sure what packages I have left to buy for player progression. Uh, I'll probably spend it on running back. That makes a little bit of sense. And I need Russell Wilson to improve. I might try to change the offensive playbook, see if that changed anything. But on to the divisional can we beat the Lions? Yes. And it's interesting. Every time I play the Seahawks in simulation in another rebuild, always lose to the Seahawks in the playoffs. Now I'm the Seahawks. I can't even win. Against the Falcons. The 11-5 Falcons in the divisional to advance to the conference championship for the first time in this realistic rebuild. And we do it. Going to be the 10-6 Cowboys. We technically have a better record than them in the conference championship. Not a whole ton of XP. There'll be more when the season ends. Um, Anton Holiday just continues to impress. Is that a defensive player of the week? It isn't. But we're advancing to the Super Bowl. Can 
We beat the Cowboys. No. Ugh. That's rough. That's rough. Season 4. Hoping we can get to the Super Bowl. More XP now for the rest of the team as they've completed season goals and things like that. We're in a, we're in a decent spot. I don't really even care about scouting at this point. We'll see if anything's available in free agency that I might want. Receiver could be helpful. Um, cornerback would be incredibly helpful. Keanu Neal's here. Don't really have an interest in that. Tyreek Hill, obviously there's interest there. Yannick Ngakwe doesn't exactly make sense. Kyle Fuller. That's actually Kendall. That's Kendall Fuller. He would make a bit of sense to offer to. So I don't really care about Jimmy Smith. We're going to make an offer on Kendall Fuller. We did bring in Kendall Fuller. That is huge for the team. Could still stand to improve on the offensive line, but I don't really plan on drafting any. I think we have great potential there. Just need some play. I might rearrange positions. That might be what we need. Connor might go to left tackle, where he would fit fairly well with less speed. That's what I might do. And then bring in the left guard out of Texas to play, who was playing left tackle to play left guard, which would fit with his uh, serious athleticism. All right, in the draft, coming out of the conference championship, we hold the 30th overall pick. I will make a move. A lot of picks in this draft. I'll trade up if I need to. With this trade, I am trading the 30th overall pick and two second round picks for the number six overall pick from the Miami Dolphins. We are trading all the way up to get the player that we want, and that is going to be cornerback Derek Thornton out of Oregon. Crazy fast, fantastic top three skills. He'll work really well. He is an 83 overall, ranked number nine in the class. We take him at number six. Very, very pleased with this selection. 96 speed, 84 man, 83 zone, 86 press, 93 acceleration. Incredible player. He will work very, very well. I'm going to let the CPU take the rest of this draft over. I just don't particularly care. They can fill, you know, uh, positions where we don't have a lot of depth. That's fine. We have some good players. We're in a good position. Season 4, which is the fourth and final season, I expect a Super Bowl. I expect it. CPU didn't really draft anyone even usable in the entire rest of the draft. I mean, yeah, it's slow. I mean, they didn't, they didn't draft anyone solid. I mean, it's not like they would have anyway, but no one even close to an 80 overall. That's fine. I didn't really care. This is the squad. I'm ready for it. I mean, I, there's nothing really to prepare for. I just kind of have to watch. Thornton is playing at the nickel. We have a solid, solid squad. It isn't insane, uh, but we've done the best that we can in, uh, you know, where we've been limited. I'm simulating straight to the playoffs. We got to make it. This is a Super Bowl caliber team. Now we just got to go out there and perform. Actually, I want to change the play playbook. Wait. All right, it is playoff time. We finished 11 and 5. Check out the stats from around the league, and it looks like the <laughs> looks like the playbook made a pretty big impact as Russell Wilson threw for almost 6,000 yards, 51 touchdowns, to 17 interceptions. Rushing, Gordon Elliott rushed for 1,000 yards, 15 TDs. Receiving, Tyler Lockett had 118 catches for nearly 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns. Paul Richardson caught 114 passes. Doug Baldwin for 100 catches. And 1,500 yards, 8 TDs. Jimmy Graham, almost 100 catches, 7 yards. The running back, Gordon Elliott, almost had 1,000 receiving yards and 12 receiving touchdowns. The offensive line performed fairly well. Defensively, B-Wags led our team in tackles with 134. Tackles for loss would be 8. From Sheldon Richardson, quarterback sacks 12.5 from Frank Clark. Interception 6 from Bobby Wagner. How many interceptions has he had in this? It's very odd how linebackers always have the most interceptions in simulation. He ate 8 in 2018. Did he really? I, I must have missed that. 6 in 2019, then 6 in 2020. Very odd the way that works, as he led our team in interceptions, of course. Uh, not too many for the rest of them. Force fumbles, 3 from Malik McDowell led the team. He also had two recoveries, which was joint lead on the team. No defensive touchdowns, but I assume Russell Wilson won MVP. He does, of the, of course, 11-5 and five Seahawks. And there's Gordon Elliott at number 8. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Russell Wilson. Gordon Elliott in there at number four. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Danny Trevathan. Be wagged in there at number two. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Joseph Fed. Malcolm Brown in there at number eight. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to BJ Rathman. We have Derek Thornton in the corner in there at number five. Nope, not five. That's, that's four. Four comes after three. And then we had somebody else. Doesn't really matter. 
A lot of coach XP. It's going to be uh, completely useless for the most part. Not even a ton of player XP. I'm going to use it, though. I'm going to upgrade this team defensively. Yeah, I mean, no one really has all that much. Maybe it has 22k. Is that another Pro Bowl appearance? It is. Let me go ahead. I'm just going to let the CPU handle it. All right, upgraded team is... Uh, it looks decent. Holiday's a beast. He's playing up to a 95 overall, playing in his second year. I mean, it's a solid team. It's a solid squad. Um, everyone looks pretty good for the most part. Defensive line could be better, but they didn't upgrade um, as much as I would have liked them to. That's pretty much what I have to say about that. Offensively, the offensive line uh, looks really solid. Not amazing, obviously, but there's only so much you can do in the realistic style. And uh, Gordon Elliott up to a 92. Let's just hope this team's good enough to advance to the Super Bowl. Gotta beat the Falcons in the wild card, though, to make it happen. Are you serious? Always, dude. I can't catch a break. I really can't. Really can't catch a break. Wild card, we lost by two. 14-14 um, after the first. Tied up at 21 at halftime. Atlanta goes out to an early lead in the third quarter takes that quarter and that pretty much made the difference to the game they scored what appears to be three field goals in the fourth and we scored two touchdowns and lost by two points i don't know where the defense was this entire game because we let up almost 500 total yards and we have a solid defense i mean <laughs> russell Wilson threw for five touchdowns rushing three touchdowns for Devonte freeman that's insane defensively i mean did we just not do anything I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, we just didn't do anything. Defense always in seems and simulation doesn't matter at all, because um, just offenses are gonna have their way with them for the most part. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. The shit don't run away.